I see this question get asked quite a lot across all the videos that I've done on my channel benchmarking different types of graphics hardware with the likes of Autodesk Inventor and Fusion 360, Autodesk's mechanical 3D CAD applications and without making you go and watch those videos the results pretty categoric and that is it doesn't matter which graphics card you have in your system the end result to your screen when it comes to zooming, panning, orbiting around big 3D models it's pretty much identical regardless of which graphics card you have in your system. Your system impacts more with its other components on 3D CAD than it does with the graphics card, which is quite curious, which then raises the inevitable question from a lot of people, and that is, what if I don't have a graphics card right now? Can I, for the time being, get away with using my integrated CPU graphics on my processor for 3D CAD until I get a dedicated graphics card? Whilst I never ever recommend that you do this, regardless of what the end result is statistically or visually, after this video I'm kind of curious myself to see what happens but I would never support this and recommend this as being a thing but I am quite curious to see what happens so the system in question behind me you can't see it because it's blurred by Zaboga and my big fat headrest it is an i7 4790k with its integrated graphics it's clocked at 4.6 gigahertz it's on an NZXT x62 all-in-one liquid cooler in the rest of the system we have 32 gig of DDR3 system RAM and a Samsung SM961 512 gig PCI Express solid-state drive so without any further hado, let's go and see what happens when we run 3D CAD with Autodesk Inventor and Fusion 360 on integrated CPU graphics. So you're gonna see two graphics cards compared against the integrated graphics. On the bench, I have a GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, which is, as of today, one of the most powerful consumer-grade graphics cards in the world. And I've also got a NVIDIA Quadro M4000, which is a mid-range professional-level graphics card. Both are gonna be compared against the integrated graphics. And the tests look a little something like this. So what I was going to do was play all the tests in their full duration, side by side, with all the music over the top of it, looking all professional tech channel-like, until I realised that I had 12 tests, and each test was about a minute long. That's way too much for you to sit through, even if I was to try and chop it down uh, as best as I could. So instead, I'm just going to show you some very short clips from each of the tests taken. What you're going to see at the top right of the screen is AMD's OCAT integrated into Inventor. That's showing frames per second and frame time. The higher the frames per second, the better. The lower the frame time, the better. At the bottom right of the screen, you're going to see hardware monitor, which is going to basically confirm which graphics card was being used at the time of each test, as well as some basic PC stats like CPU core utilization, GPU utilization, that kind of thing as well. One thing to note though, when you're seeing a clip of the integrated graphics, the clip is extremely jerky. Uh, that's not what I was looking at when I was doing the test. That's not an accurate representation of uh, what it was looking like. Look at the top right and see the frames per second. Obviously, that doesn't match up to what Inventor's actually doing. The problem was that the integrated graphics is just not compatible with screen capture software. There's just not enough resource there to power a 3D card application and record the screen in a fluid manner. So you're just seeing jerky feedback. On screen right now, you're seeing what I was seeing as I was recording the integrated graphics test. And the screen did go black a couple of times, which is consistent with what you see when the graphics driver crashes and resets. Whether it was that or it was a faulty connection at the back of the motherboard for the HDMI out on integrated graphics, I'm not too sure. I wasn't really testing for long enough to really be all that worried about it, as long as I could see the frames per second that it was outputting to the screen for Inventor and Fusion 360. That's all I really cared about. I wasn't really interested in troubleshooting that kind of a thing at that point. And finally, before we look at the results in a chart format, the astute amongst you might have realized that a few of the fusion clips don't have a frames per second monitor at the top right those are the clips whilst fusion 360 is running on integrated graphics for some reason when fusion detects the lack of a supported graphics card it decides to nerf its graphics api down from the normally run dx11 down at dx9 which means that most supported screen capture software these days that most people would use just does not capture dx9 based applications so i wasn't able to capture the fps and i really wasn't interested enough to go and search the internet for one that could so I decided to take the uh, the Fusion results on integrated graphics on face value and also pay attention to the banner that's running along the top of it. Fusion 360 really does not like integrated CPU graphics and the fact that the entire application downgrades itself from DX11 to DX9 on the lack of a supported graphics card being detected, that's reason enough for me to never use Fusion 360 on integrated CPU graphics if anyone ever asks. 
that's the reason why. All right, okay, and now for some results. I'm gonna burn through these as quickly as I possibly can because there's no great surprises here. It's pretty much exactly what I expected. And if you've uh, if you've happened to come across this video off the back of something like a Gamers Nexus video and you found your way here and you've just recently watched Steve chart frame times and 0.1% lows and a graph extensively and very methodically, you ain't getting nothing like that here. This is very, very approximate. Uh, it's not worth it for a test like this in Inventor. So all I've done was looked at the frames per second across 20 seconds of zooming and panning, looked at what it averaged and stabilized out at, and then by eye I've taken a reading from the OCAT output based on just visually eyeing it up pretty much. So I'm going to concentrate mostly on the iGPU scores. You can see the Quadro and the GTX 1080 Ti scores on each of the graphs, but I'm going to talk mostly about the iGPU because that's what this test is all about. The first test, large assembly in Inventor, and it was displayed as you would typically model in Inventor with shaded mode on, no visual effects, no shadows, no reflections. Display hardware was set to quality mode with anti-aliasing on, which is just fast approximate anti-aliasing to FXAA and minimum frame rate was at zero, which means there's no software throttling when the frame rate dips below a certain threshold. And the iGPU was pushing out around 29 frames per second, which is respectable. That is respectable, especially for an, a large assembly like this. This is a very detailed assembly. So 29 frames per second is, in, it is usable. It was usable, I was impressed with that. So that is good. The next test, we've got uh, the same assembly, but this time we've enabled all the visual styles, which means we've moved over to realistic mode. So we're, we're cashing in quite a lot of uh, updated textures, a lot of more high resolution textures into the scene. And we've enabled shadows, ambient shadows, scene shadows, reflections, and we've, uh, we've still got the grid light turned on, which is image-based lighting. And the iGPU dipped down to 10 frames per second, which is quite laggy and jerky, but there was no visual degradation. It still managed to hold the scene quite well. There was no crashing. There was no uh, refusal to display any of the on-screen entities. So that was good. Again, usable, but significantly worse than the dedicated graphics cards. But if you absolutely had to use an iGPU with Autodesk Inventor, yes, it did work. It did work, but as I said at the very start of the video, I would not recommend it. Next test was the single part. That's the alloy wheel that I modeled personally back to the typical modeling mode, shaded with no visual effects, and the iGPU scored 97 frames per second by eye across the panning and zooming tests, which is, again, it's absolutely fine. That is well, well, well above what you would normally need, uh, and that's, that's absolutely fine. So single part and small assemblies on an iGPU handles it absolutely fine. But as you can see, compared to the other two dedicated graphics cards, there is still a, a definite obvious hit in performance when using the iGPU. Okay, the next test, the single model with visual styles enabled. So this is again, textures cached in, shadows enabled, reflections on, and the frames per second tanked all the way down to 23 frames per second. Visible lag, jerkiness, but again, it, it held the elements, it displayed them, there was no visible degradation, and it worked just fine. So again, workable indeed. Next test, across to Fusion 360. Unfortunately, this is where the test completely fell to bits. Because Fusion 360, when it detects the lack of a graphics card or a supported graphics card, it nerfs its application down from DirectX 11 to DirectX 9, which meant my uh, frames per second monitoring software wasn't able to capture the frames per second, so I wasn't able to take a reading. However, not just that, the entire application was really lagging. It was jerky, it was unresponsive with the iGPU, and uh, it's not something I would want to use on a daily basis with uh, with a workload of any any kind of size, and that was with a large assembly with no visual effects. Onto uh, the large assembly with visual effects, it was even worse. Couldn't take a reading. Uh, the dedicated graphics cards were averaging around 30 frames per second, which is borderline okay. Fusion 360's graphics engine isn't that powerful it's not where it's not known for being able to handle large assemblies so those dedicated graphics cards even the most powerful you know one of the most powerful graphics cards in the world was still pushing out just 30 frames per second but the igpu was was pretty much dying on its feet at this point with uh, all kinds of messaging in fusion 360 saying you, you're not using the right graphics card you need to sort yourself out get yourself you know, sort your life out mate over onto the single part for fusion 360 it was a bit smoother with the igpu uh, but still can't measure the frames per second and I was getting uh, graphics driver resets as I was as I was using it But 
Again, as I said earlier, I wasn't sure if that was a loose cable or whether it was a graphics driver. Uh, but yeah, I'm, not, I'm not that bothered. I'm not that bothered. I wouldn't recommend using IGP with Fusion 360 anyway, purely because of the application downgrade from DX11 to DX9. And uh, it's just not something I wanna, I'd, I'd wanna do. And this is for a professional production workload. I wouldn't personally want to risk it. And then the final test, single part Fusion 360 with all visual effects enabled. The dedicated GPUs were handling that quite well above 120 frames per second whereas the integrated graphics was was still quite smooth i think again it's just not something i'd, I'd recommend it doesn't matter what the what the reading would have been with the igpu just purely because of the way it was and the way fusion reported that situation i just would not recommend doing that so those are the tests that's my conclusion inventor is actually okay with the igpu short term uh, until you do get yourself a dedicated graphics card it will handle the uh, the engine well uh, and it doesn't lose any visual fidelity that I noticed, but with Fusion 360, I wouldn't recommend it. Stay tuned to TFI. Pretty soon on the channel, I'm going to be doing an entire AMD ITX workstation build with a Ryzen 7 CPU and an AMD Radeon Pro graphics card, which is going to be relatively cheap. It's a relatively cheap workstation build, $200 for a professional graphics card, so stay tuned for that. That's coming up pretty soon. Okay, guys, hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that answered the question, what happens when you run the IGPU, especially in Inventor? It does work. You just get a frames per second dip uh, over and above using a dedicated graphics card. So thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.